Hi everyone, thanks for joining me again today. Uh, it is Wednesday, Wednesday afternoon here in New York City. Uh, we had a lot of rain the past couple of days, but it is beautiful now. Um, hope you guys are doing well wherever you are. And I am coming to you today with some exciting news. Um, we pretty much never ever do this. Uh, very rarely do we put things on sale, but we are having a sale today um, for the next, well, last, while supplies last. So we'll see how long it takes. Um, could be on for the next couple of weeks, we'll see. Um, but basically, yeah, I wanted to share with you a little bit about what we are doing here in the store. So we are trying to completely rethink the way that we um, do business, just like everybody else is trying to adapt to the new normal. And what that means for us is we are revisiting our product selection, we're revisiting our displays, um, we're trying to make room on the shelves for new and interesting things. And so in order to do that, while also trying to raise funds, we're gonna do a 50% off sale. So this is really, really big. So if you have been um, waiting to come into the store to check out what we have, now is a great time to do it. I'm gonna give you a little preview of what we have. Um, only select items are on sale, not everything. So you'll see, I'm going to switch the camera around. So you can see here we have a special table that's dedicated just to the items that we have on sale and we have a little bit of everything. We have everything from anatomical models, you need a human skull, uh, we have that for you. We have some home decor items, skull salt and pepper shakers, we have some really cool and unique magnifying glasses. Um, we also have some like do-it-yourself type things. Um, so if you have kids or if you are looking for a project to do, you can grow your own crystal, you can grow your own plants. Um, so we have some project type things. We have some fun crafty things. We have temporary tattoos. We have some um, laser cut butterflies and moths. Um, so that these are actually come apart. So. Um, they're just kind of in here in this packaging, but they're cut out and you can use them. You can stick them onto things. They're very cool. We have coasters and greeting cards. We have assorted random bones. If you need random bones for whatever reason, we've got you covered. Um, we also have little tiny jackalopes. So cute. Little tiny baby jackalopes in, uh, that are cast in pewter. Um, very cool, unique item. Definitely not going to find a lot of these things in other places. So I definitely suggest that you check it out if you're in the city. If you can come on down, we encourage you to do so. Um, right now these items are only available in store. Um, we haven't put any of them online. Um, we have some really awesome hand carved jewelry, some very unique pieces. Um, so some little tiny bees that are um, hand carved out of mother of pearl. Um, yeah, so if you are in the New York City area, please come on down. We would love to show you what we've got. Um, but today, what I wanted to focus on is, let me switch back over. Um, so today though, I wanted to focus on some items that are available for purchase online because I know a lot of you join us from all over and you're not able to come in. So what I did want to talk to you today about is cane toads. Um, this is one of the weirder items that we have in the store. We have lots of different weird things, um, but uh, so when I say that it's weird, it's pretty weird. <laughs> Our standards are pretty high for weirdness. Um, one, so I wanted to start off, before we get to the real thing, I wanted to start off with an illustration of a cane toad so you get an idea of what I'm talking about. So we have these wonderful posters. Uh, maybe one day I can do an episode on our Seba prints. So Alberta Seba was uh, a Dutch naturalist from I think the 1600s or so, and he had this amazing cabinet of curiosities, and he, and he, um, he commissioned illustrations of a lot of the pieces in his collection and he had um, a cane toad in his collection that he had illustrated and so these are really beautiful prints that can be you know hung up on the wall or framed um, these are exclusive to us nobody else has these only evolution has um, these prints we have 50 different types in total um, and the reason I bring this up first is just to um, 
just to introduce the idea of cane toads and also to um, mention how uh, they are, um, their history is intertwined with human history and fraught with foolishness and errors. And so I wanted to start off with that. Um, so they are, so their scientific name is Bufo Marinus. And the reason they are called Marinus is because Seba himself thought that these were actually, um, they, they lived in the sea, which they do not. They are terrestrial toads, um, but their name has stuck with them forever. Um, so they are still called Bufo Marinus, even though they are not, have nothing to do with the sea and never have. But ever since um, the 1600s, that is pretty much what they have been known as. Um, so there goes error number one in identifying what a cane toad is, number one. Already, we are messing up. But now the more interesting part about cane toads is more modern history of interaction with humans. And so this is them in the flesh. So this is what a cane toad looks like. They are really big. You can see they're about the size, um, about the size of my hand. I can hold it in my palm. They are really chunky. They have amazing expressive faces. Let's see if I can get it to focus. There we go. Um, look at these wonderful ridges along the eyes, the nose. Um, they have these awesome glands here on the back behind their eyes. And these actually secrete a um, very toxic poison. Um, and all of these other warts and stuff that are on their back also secrete different types of poisons, um, or the same poison, but they secrete you know toxins and stuff like that, um, and which makes them extremely dangerous to, um, to anyone who might want to eat them. And uh, so we have a couple of different ones here to show you. Um, so I should mention we're doing free shipping on these um, for the next week. Um, and so you can check that out if you are interested. And so cane toads, um, as I mentioned before, are really a lesson in human foolishness. Um, cane toads are native to South America and they were artificially introduced into Australia and the Philippines and other places in the Pacific um, because some people believed that they were really good at controlling an agricultural pest called the cane beetle. That's how they get their name cane toads. Um, and these beetles ate sugar canes and it was a really big problem for agriculture. And so people thought, oh, these toads, they eat anything. They are extremely voracious. They will eat um, insects, of course, but they also eat small birds. They eat small bats. They eat small lizards. They are absolutely insatiable. They eat any and everything. They're also one of the few amphibians who actually will feast on dead flesh as well. So they not only eat alive things, they eat dead things. And so someone thought, oh, these would be great to help control the agricultural pests that we're having on the sugar canes. Let's introduce this worldwide. And this happened in about the 30s, um, these, these um, toads were introduced pretty much uh, worldwide. And what happened is that nobody realized that the sugarcane beetles that were eating the sugar canes actually live on the top of the sugar canes. And <laughs> the uh, cane toad is not a very good jumper. So um, it was actually pretty ineffective on the sugarcane beetle. Um, and so cane toads ended up just spreading out into the countryside and became an extremely invasive pest. And now it's become a huge problem, a huge ecological problem, especially in Australia. I just learned today that apparently there is this very cool, um, like, you know, cult classic documentary called um, Cane Toads and Unnatural History from 1988. I think it's available on YouTube. I am definitely going to watch it. It looks amazing. And it, sh it sort of documents this very strange, you know, human interference in the introduction of cane toads into places where it is not supposed to be. And so cane toads are really destructive to um, to their unnatural habitats that they have been introduced to because they eat everything. They are highly toxic. 
Um, they reproduce extremely rapidly. They are very successful species in terms of evolution, and that's a problem. They're also really um, dangerous for dogs. Dogs are especially vulnerable to their toxins, and dogs will, you know, occasionally, um, you know, eat cane toads or, or try to bite them or lick them if they are around. So it's really a problem for both domesticated and wildlife in their um, non-native environments. And that's why we have access to so many cane toads is because they are regularly um, exterminated because they are such an invasive um, pest species. So you can definitely look into that. There is so much about cane toads that is so interesting that I can't possibly go into today. Um, but these are the full size cane toads that we have. And these are actually quite small from what I can tell. Um, looking online, like real live cane toads, they can live up to 15 years and they can, get an ex they can get extremely long. Some of them are as big as nine inches. So can you imagine an enormous toad nine inches long? So these are actually pretty small, pretty tame when you think about it. And then we also have these amazing toad coin purses, um, which are just fabulous. Um, I use these, I use mine every day. It zips up the back and I put my change in here. Uh, I put my keys. I put uh, my headphones. Um, so these are really practical and you are guaranteed to not lose anything because we would never lose this baby. He is gonna stay with you forever. And he's very, they look very cross. Um, they definitely have this amazing expression, all of them. Um, they very displeased. And he's even crossing his little arms. So um, these are just great. These are really wonderful, really unique. They feel extremely soft. They're very pleasant actually to touch and hold. They're super, super soft. They're like leather um, and they are just such a unique, weird, weird item in the store that I definitely wanted to share it with you guys because uh, I don't often get to talk about cane toads and I did a ton of research on them and they are extremely interesting and they are just a lesson in human arrogance and foolishness and excess so um you know we we deserve everything that we got with the cane toad because they are um we really screwed the pooch on this one so uh just so much interesting history behind cane toads and i thought i wanted to share it with you guys so check those out switch the camera back and yeah so hopefully you guys enjoyed learning a little bit about cane toads i know i did um before i before I came down here to talk to you. I was reading up on it. You can really get sucked into it. I'm definitely gonna check out that documentary, uh, Cane Toads and Unnatural History from um, 1988 apparently, and I think it's on YouTube. So check that out. Let me know if you find out any cool facts about cane toads, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.